do you see everything yes yes we okay, can perfect thank you uh okay so today i would like to show you um, some idea uh which aims to involve uh, geological archive in coastal management uh the presentation will cover three um, topics um, the first one will be a perspective of information that we get from geological archive um, related to coastal flooding and this topic is related to the ongoing research project that is finishing uh, this year next year actually uh, and the second part of the presentation will be related to the new project that uh, just uh, begun and at the end of the presentation i will also uh, try to um, show uh, what we are looking for and uh, what is the challenge we want to deal with uh, in the in the future so here on the photo you can uh, see a part of the coast of the polish coast the baltic sea uh, the coastline is built with uh, cliffs, uh, with sandy barriers, and also coastal wetlands. So this is the effect of one uh, of the seasonal storm events a few years ago. Uh, that shows uh, that parts of our coast uh, are endangered with um, coastal flooding. So the motivation uh, to using geological data uh, is the limit uh, of the time span uh, of the other kind of information. Uh, so we have a very nice uh, data on instrumental record uh, up to 200 years. Uh, we have some historical archive uh, that goes for the past uh, 1000 years. Uh, but we don't know what is uh, in the longer time span. Uh, do we have any information about uh, some um, hazards that may occur in the coastal zone? So the first step of our study was to uh, check the chronicles, uh, to look at the old photos, aerial photos, uh, older maps, also uh, drawings by artists, even sculptures uh, in the churches, mm -hmm. and all of this uh, contains some information about the events that occurred in the past uh, that destroyed partially or totally uh, coastal infrastructure and uh, that led to um, a lot of uh, drones in our regions. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so the first question was uh, which of these events uh, were recorded in the sediments? Uh, in the geological archive. Uh, so we investigated uh, study sites along the southern Baltic coast, mainly in Poland. Uh, uh, here you can see uh, all of the sites that were investigated in the past years, uh, and some of them showed the potential to um, uh, to contain a sedimentary record. Uh, with a time span longer than a few hundred years. And these sites, mainly coastal wetlands, uh, were treated with uh, geological techniques to get uh, some information about past coastal uh, flooding. And what we can find in the sediments in general, the first thing is the geometry of the deposits that uh, are formed during the flooding also genders in the coastal morphology. And the uh, direct evidence of post-coastal flooding uh, related in this case to uh, storm deposits are sediment layers, sandy layers that uh, cut the pit deposits that occur at each specific site. So if there is no coastal flooding, we expect to have uh, pit deposits in the coastal wetland. But if any event of, um, of uh, flooding occurs, it may lead to erosion of the base of the pits, uh, transferring, moving some parts of this bed uh, through the water and then uh, deposit it later in the form of uh, rip-up clusters. 
uh, we can also expect uh, changes in the sediment composition. So the one of the thing we are looking for are changes in grain size distribution. So we investigate the diameters of each particles uh, that occur uh, in such layers and also below and uh, below and uh, above uh, these layers. We also investigate surrounding areas like dunes, uh, beaches, offshore deposits, and check uh, if we have any specific signature that could uh, be interpreted as a event uh, layer and not um, some soft changes of the uh, sediment influx uh, just uh, behind the back barrier environment. One of the signatures we are looking for are also heavy minerals and their compositions. These are minerals that have very high uh, specific density. So if they, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, so if we have a high, higher content of uh, uh, specific heavy minerals, we also can uh, expect, we can interpret that we had uh, higher energy conditions that led to a formation of um, particular uh, sandy layer. Uh, there are also some biological proxies. Uh, in sediments, we can find uh, foraminifera, diatoms, uh, which are direct evidence of marine inundation, marine inflow to the coastal wetlands. Uh, however, sometimes they are not preserved, they may be dissolved, they may be eroded, and we only have a paleo DNA signature, and sometimes even this information is also uh, missing. Uh, and there is also a most basic indicator of uh, sediment input to the coastal wetlands. Uh, this is uh, changes of uh, organic matter content in the profile. So if we have a decrease of the marine organic content, uh, we see that something happened. It can be an increased uh, influx of eolian deposits, but it could also be re related to uh, coastal flooding and we need to use other proxies to uh, interpret uh, the sediments properly. And there are also geochemical signatures, uh, so the influx of uh, particular elements that can be also interpreted as a marine uh, inundation. And here's a view, uh, more detailed view on one of these proxies. So on the left side, you can see uh, heavy minerals that occur in uh, storm deposits, but also in surrounding areas. The key is the uh, assemblage, actual assemblage, and the proportion between minerals of different shapes and different uh, specific densities, uh, which could point on high energetic events that occurred in the past. Uh, so, for example, here you can see two types of storm deposits. The one that was the result of uh, inundation at the coastal wetland, in such layer, we have higher content of heavy minerals in general, and also a bit different uh, assemblage that in the uh, in the pit deposits uh, above this uh, layer. And on the right, uh, the result of overtopping the dune uh, deposits. Uh, so not that high energetic event, but uh, more like uh, frequent uh, inflows related to a storm surge that uh, comes somewhere near the top of the dune and moves part of the sediment just to the back barrier uh, environment. Uh, and in this case, uh, we have a much uh, more uh, complicated situation. However, uh, with comparing this assemblage which we find uh, in the score to the surrounding sediments, we also saw that uh, these storm deposits uh, are characterized by a bit different um, minerals contents. And now, the one of the cases found in the Rogovo site, this is the middle part of the southern Baltic uh, coast. Uh, in one of the churches, we found uh, the sculpture uh, that showed some kind of uh, flood that occurred in the past. And the imp important thing in this case is that uh, the storm deposits were found uh, up to the one and a half kilometer uh, to the land. Uh, they contained microfossils of marine origin. Uh, we dated, uh, actually colleagues dated uh, um, deposits that uh, occur below and above 
these uh, sand layers, uh, and that gave a possible time of formation of these deposits. And it was correlated with the event from uh, 1497, uh, the most catastrophic coastal flooding that occurred in the southern Baltic coast. It was very severe three to four days storm event, and that led to break of the sandy barrier and moving the water uh, to the land. Mm. And this, this site is very important because uh, if we uh, track risk estimations related to instrumental data that covers around 150 to 100 uh, years of measurements, uh, we see that the limit of possible inundation ends within the sandy barrier. So we have uh, 200 years of the of the data, and uh, it says that there is almost no risk of flooding uh, this area. Uh, however, in the drill checker record, we found uh, one very severe evidence of coastal flooding, and there were also few layers related um, to other events that occurred just 500 years ago. So it's not that long ago, uh, because the history of the coast is even longer, up to a few thousand years. Um, uh, so um, yeah, so this is this is an important note that. Uh, sometimes uh, we find evidences of coastal flooding that uh, should not that we should not expect uh, according to um, usually used uh, coastal management methods. Uh, another site uh, from Mechelinki. So here we found a very nice uh, a record of past coastal floods. Uh, over 25 events were recorded in this area. Here you can see contemporary overworld sediments related to storm deposition just behind the uh, beach and behind the initial uh, coastal dunes. Uh, we took cores at this coastal wetland um, and found out uh, a lot of uh, evidences of past coastal floodings. So this is how it looks under the microscope. So we have uh, um, we have three type of deposits. The type one is the less affected deposit. It's a pit deposition with a minor admixture of sand. We have partially transformed uh, influence deposits of type two and also type three, which we interpret to be uh, events that occurred in the past. Mm, and this interpretation, of course, uh, was not uh, done only with looking at the sediments. We used all of these uh, proxies, which I mentioned uh, earlier. So uh, grain size analysis, geochemical signature, microfossils, uh, and so on, heavy minerals. And uh, this is the final interpretation that these layers are actually re related to uh, storm events. So this core was also dated, and it allowed us to interpret the history of the coast in the time span of a few thousand years. So by comparing uh, contemporary surface, by comparing uh, deposits that we found in the core, by using dating, uh, we interpreted uh, the evolution of the coastal zone, and we interpret that we had two periods of very frequent coastal flooding that occurred uh, a few thousand years ago and that occurred in the past few hundred years ago. And here we concluded that the, one of the factors that influenced uh, coastal flooding uh, was, uh, uh, was the um, presence of the well-developed uh, sandy barrier. So this is interpretation from the uh, geological point of view. Uh, and we believe that uh, high sediment availability that uh, the natural occurring uh, coastal barriers are important factor, in fact, uh, to preserve and to protect the coastal wet wetlands from the uh, flooding. Okay, so this is, this is what, we, what comes from the past and now. Uh, we want to get more detail into geological deposits. Uh, we would like to compare uh, 
the yearly forming, seasonal forming geological deposits in the coastal uh, wetlands uh, with actual storm surge parameters, uh, water levels, waving, and uh, any other information that we can achieve. We also want to uh, study in detail morphological response uh, to storm surges that are occurring uh, in this region. Uh, so this approach uh, uses two things. The first, we want to uh, use uh, multi-beam echo sounder, uh, a drone uh, equipped with multiple sensors, uh, and also surface sampling to give a very detailed view on uh, barrier morphology, seabed morphology, uh, coastal sediments. Uh, we also want uh, to acquire uh, information um, about storm surge parameters and then to uh, find a new approach that will allow us to combine all these things together. So the first step of this new project that we just started is to uh, take a closer look to morphological response of the storms and morphological response and morphological features of, of uh, our coasts. Uh, so uh, here you can see examples of the data that we acquire. So these are data of multispectral camera, LIDAR, uh, imaging. Uh, we also use uh, MBS. Uh, we want to improve also classification models uh, on the features that appear in the coastal zone. And when we get this, uh, we want to uh, establish a very ambitious thing. Uh, we want to check uh, detailed, uh, detailed uh, features of sediments that are forming each season in the core, and then to compare this with uh, meteorological data um, uh, about the events that occur uh, during this sediment formation. So to do this, we need a core that is few years, at least few years old. We need to find a proper method to uh, have an age control. Uh, and then we need to compare, evaluate the information that we have in the sediment to the cores that we are using uh, to give a basic information if we had a past coastal floods or what was the uh, approximated a magnitude uh, landward extension of uh, of uh, sediments that formed back uh, and if we have a good correlation of some of the proxies of these detail, uh, detailed uh, features of the sediment then maybe we will be able uh, by calibration to look deeper in the core and uh, recreate reinterpret geological information in terms of instrumental data so not only uh, talking about uh, frequency of the storm events, uh, but also to get uh, any information about uh, possible the magnitude. Uh, this approach has a lot of challenges. Uh, so, uh, so it will be very interesting uh, to study, to research. So, uh, and this will be done in the future years. Uh, we are uh, just at the uh, beginning. So what we would like to achieve in a few years or even in 15 years or more uh, is to link geological records to instrumental measurements uh, and uh, extend the information that you get uh, from standard methods uh, to longer time series and try to integrate this data uh, for the purpose of coastal management. Uh, the main idea uh, was inspired by deposits, by research of the lake deposits, uh, where uh, uh, at the moment uh, researchers that deal with uh, lake deposits, yearly laminated deposits, uh, are already stop talking about past climate transfers. They start talking even about weather changes in the past because they have extremely high resolution. Uh, in their sedimentary record, and they are already working on calibration of information from sediment trap, from the cores, uh, to recreate conditions that occurred uh, in the past, 
and that was the main inspiration and this is the main idea for uh, my uh, future research uh, so uh, there are also uh, threads that we want to uh, apply uh, to measure our um, to use our uh, measurements in some quantitative ways to analyze some possible scenarios in terms of uh, changing of um, coastal morphology. And uh, we believe that uh, the modeling of the coastal zone using uh, well-known uh, methods, well-known models will be also useful uh, to combine uh, standard coastal management techniques with the geological archive uh, that we already have and we study uh, in detail at the moment. And that's it. So here are some contact details. Uh, thank you very much.